So this just arrived in the mail. It's a toy called the Magical Musical Thing. It was released in 1979 by Mattel. I didn't have one of these growing up, but I remember seeing them at other people's houses. When I saw that these can be had on eBay for about 20 bucks, I immediately ordered one. In addition to being a toy, it's also a very simple analog synthesizer. I'm eager to give it a spin and see what it sounds like. Okay, so first things first, does it even work? Okay, we've got sound. It's horribly out of tune, but I do like the way it feels to play it. It has this strip here. These aren't exactly buttons. It's sort of a plastic ribbon that you press down on. The tuning's going to be an issue, though. These two notes are supposed to be an octave apart. Okay, let's open it up and see if we can fix it. So internally, this instrument is very simple. It consists of just three elements. This long control strip, which is the thing we actually press down on, an extremely basic analog oscillator, and a speaker. The control strip seems to be some sort of variable resistor. For those who don't know, a variable resistor is a basic electrical component that limits the flow of electrical current. What makes them variable is the amount of resistance can be changed, and changing the resistance in a circuit will often change the way that circuit behaves. In the case of this toy, changing the resistance changes the note that gets played. Which brings us back to our problem. Clearly, if our notes are wrong, it's because the actual resistances that this thing is generating are wrong. I'm gonna try some stuff. So I tried replacing all of the components in that little circuit board and it had no effect at all. The pitches that are being produced are exactly the same as before. So back to the drawing board. The next thing I'm gonna try is adding a second variable resistor. This should allow me to tune the entire scale. So adding in that extra variable resistor did actually work in the sense that I can now change the pitches of all of the notes at the same time. Unfortunately, that's a lot less helpful than it sounds. It's pretty easy for me to get a specific note in tune, but putting one note in tune seems to always throw all the other ones off. So I need a new approach. While I rack my brain and try to figure out what to do next, let's do some research. Can you do this? When you think of a toy like this, coming from a big company like Mattel. You imagine it must have been invented by committee. How about this? I picture a bunch of executives brainstorming around a boardroom table somewhere and congratulating each other on not overthinking the name of the toy. But that's not what happened at all. You're weird. The magical musical thing was invented in 1977 by just one guy, a man named Franklin Eventoff. I wanted to know the story behind it, so I called him up. I made a toy for my daughter called the Rainmaker and then I uh, showed it to Mattel and it was too expensive. Then on my drive home from that meeting, I realized a way to make it very affordable and I uh, took that back into Mattel and they said, well, if you can just make it play a scale, we'd like to do it. And I came back the next day or two later and uh, that was it. We were off and running. Hearing this story, I naturally assumed that he must have been trained as an electrical engineer. No, I'm a tinker. I have no electronics background. I'm, I'm lost in electronics. I'm good with uh, the membrane part of it. The membrane that Franklin is referring to is this thing, this control strip. The thing that makes the magical musical thing special is a technology that Franklin himself invented. It's called a force sensing resistor. The force sensing resistor is what I'm more well known for. After the success of the magical musical thing, Franklin started a couple of companies that produce these sorts of sensors. It's used in a lot of electronic musical instruments, hundreds of thousands actually. For example, the pads on an Akai MPC workstation are force sensing resistors made by Franklin's company. In talking to Franklin, I also learned that the magical musical thing was far from the only instrument he invented. The Sonica was the follow-up to the magical musical thing. That's one that deserves resurrection. As you can see, the Sonica is really beautiful. It's very similar to the magical musical thing, but it has a hand-carved wooden neck. It also has a much better oscillator that's tunable. These instruments were made by hand in batches of 24. 
All told, about 650 were made, and they are collector's items. Remarkable uh, little instrument, even today. And then I did another one called the Key, which was built around the same concept of the Sonica. The Key was released in 1995 under the brand name Lone Star. They made 10,000 of them, and uh, they gave away a lot of them on the Wheel of Fortune. Unfortunately, the instrument failed to find traction. Franklin says it's because it had too many features, and it wasn't really clear who it was for. These instruments are also pretty rare, but they do pop up on eBay every so often. So anyway, given that Franklin has designed so many instruments, I couldn't help but wonder what kind of music he makes. The eclectic kind of music. I had a group with my brothers. We were called the Organ Grinders, and then we were called Romany. And we did an album on Mercury Records. Then we traveled in a school bus and played around the country. We did that for 12 years, my brothers and I. After getting off the phone with Franklin, I obviously had to look up his music. It's all up on YouTube. I actually really loved it. It's kind of like classic psychedelic rock from late 60s. I wish I could play some in this video, but it was released on Mercury Records, and I would almost definitely get a copyright strike if I tried to play some. So you'll have to look it up yourselves. Another cool discovery is that Franklin is still inventing musical instruments to this day. And I'm still developing instruments. I have a wind, a percussion, and a keyboard, and also a string. But So it's a line of instruments. But I still build musical instruments. I think of myself as a musician and, and an instrument builder. Right before we got off the phone, Franklin asked me how my magical musical thing was actually working. And I told him I was having trouble tuning it. You can tune it with a pencil and a razor blade. Basically shortening the resistors and making them more conductive and less conductive. It's just a resistor ladder. You just need to tune the ladder. That was the big disappointment about that product is that it was so out of tune. They just didn't care for 25 cents more. They could have made it in tune, but they did. It was a noisemaker rather than an instrument. Okay, I just got off the phone with Franklin. It was really great chatting with him. I have a lot of things to look up now. But right, right now, I'm going to try to use his method for tuning this thing. So I've got this razor blade, and I'm making careful incisions next to the notes that are too sharp. And when a note is too flat, I'm drawing like a cloud of graphite on the sensor. Okay, about two hours have passed. It looks like it's pretty much in tune. I'm able to play it like this, flat on the table. Okay, let's try to squeeze it back into the neck. Okay, this is it. Moment of truth. So how do you like that? It's in tune. So that's pretty amazing. Not only did I get to speak to the creator of this thing, but he gave me the key piece of information that I needed in order to actually tune it. In fairness, I will say it took me well over two hours of trial and error, so not for the faint of heart. Okay, let's make some music before it goes out of tune again. As you can see, I've got Ableton Live up on the screen. And the first thing I'm gonna do is record a simple bass line. Now that we've got a basic pattern done, I'm going to add some effects to it to kind of thicken up the sound, and then we'll move on to the next track. In order to have some variation in the sound, track two is gonna have different effects from track one. I'm gonna pitch shift it up by an octave, and I'm gonna add some delay. I'm going to add a low pass filter on that lead to make it a little less harsh and let's pull in a beat. So quite usable as an instrument if you can get it in tune. The original TV commercials for the magical musical thing are up on YouTube and the comment sections for those videos are filled with people who grew up with this toy, who learned to play the songs in the manual some of whom even went on to get Casio keyboards and piano lessons. So for at least some kids, 
this toy may have been their first brush with any kind of musical instrument, the thing that actually kickstarted a love of music. I can't help but wonder what the equivalent toy from now would be. Maybe it's that Meowzik keyboard they sell at Target. I want to thank Franklin Eventoff for taking the time to talk. If we hadn't talked, I never would have known how to tune it or learned about his music or the many other instruments he developed, so really cool. I've turned the sounds of the magical musical thing into a free sample library for Decent Sampler. You should be able to find the download link for that in the description to this YouTube video. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, now is a great time to subscribe. I've got a bunch of videos on the way. Also, there is a Patreon. It costs $5 a month, and every month you get an exclusive sample library made by yours truly. Also worth noting, if you sign up, you can download all of the old exclusive sample libraries as well. Okay, I think that's it. See you soon.